Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a brand new adventure, IS Naruto's Freedom. Huge shout out to the amazing author. Check out their details in the description below. Want to follow along? The link's right there for you. In this session, we'll be exploring chapters 6 through 8. Don't forget to smash that like button and drop a comment. Your engagement helps us out with the algorithm and means the world to us. All right, let's jump into the story. Naruto stood next to Han, looking at the screen. He was excited for his next round and couldn't wait till it was their turn. He looked over at Han and saw the smile on her face, but her eyes showed her worry. Hey, are you okay? He asked her. The sudden sound made her jump a bit. She turned and looked at her partner. I'm fine, she said, but Naruto wasn't buying it. No, you aren't, he responded, making her look away. It's nothing, she repeated, but Naruto wouldn't take that answer. He turned her around and looked her directly in the eyes. It is not nothing, he insisted, making her look at him in awe. I am your partner. You can always tell me when something's bothering you. Han nodded and let silence fill the gap between them for a few moments. I'm just scared that we will lose, she whispered, finally. We keep facing tougher and tougher opponents, and I don't want to let you down. Naruto gave her a warm smile that made Han relax a bit. You can never let me down, he assured her, making her blush. No matter what happens, we will do our best, and that is what matters. Han returned the smile. Thanks, she said, relieved, and gave him a big hug, and he hugged her back. Now, let's go kick some ass, he said, and Han smiled. Yeah, she shouted, with her typical happiness. Will Naruto Namikaze and Han Nanatoke please head to the launch area? A voice boomed over the speakers. Naruto smiled and started to walk towards the launch area. He stopped for a moment and turned towards Han. Let's go, he encouraged. She tried to hide her reddened face as she followed the blonde. They got to the launch area. Han summoned the strike and took off first. Naruto waited a few moments, then activated the freedom. He floated in the air for a few moments before entering onto the catapult. This is Naruto Namikaze in freedom, launching, he announced, and was thrown out of the catapult. He flew towards Han and hovered next to his partner. They were the first ones out of the launch area and waited on their opponents. Soon they saw an orange flash coming towards them and saw Charles in his IS. He was flying in a Raphael Revive custom. Naruto knew that it had better armor and weapons than the mass production model. Next to Chika flew out in his IS by Akushiki. Its main weapon was a sword, but Naruto knew that there was more to it than it seemed. We need to take out Achika first, Naruto decided. Han just gave him an odd look. Why Achika? She asked. I thought we were going to go after Charles, then Achika because he has less experience. Naruto turned towards Han and gave her a serious look. I know the capabilities of Charles's machine from all the information that is available on it, he explained. As for Achika's IS, it is a new model with little information published on it. So, it's best to take out the uncertain variable first, before we target the known one. Han nodded as she finally understood. Okay, let's do it, she agreed. As they turned to face their opponents, Ichika watched Naruto and Han with uncertainty in his eyes. He could tell that this was going to be a tough battle. He and Charles had watched all of their last fight and had to admit they were a great team. They always seemed to be in harmony with their movements and could change strategies on they fly. The one thing he did notice was that Naruto was the one who made the changes. The plan became, take Naruto out first, and Han would follow. Charles looked over at Ichika and smiled, knowingly. Ready? He asked, and Ichika nodded. The start buzzer sounded, and the battle began. Ichika watched as Naruto leveled his blaster and started to rain down lasers at them. He dodged to the side and summoned Yukihira to his hand. He activated ignition boost and charged towards his blonde opponent, only to be blindsided by laser fire. He turned and saw Han, wearing some sort of green armor, firing a large blaster at him. He dodged the next blast as Han charged, only to be intercepted by Charles. He had two machine guns in hand and was firing at Han, pushing her back. He charged forward, Yukihira in hand, ready to strike, only to dodge fire coming from Naruto. He watched as Naruto attached his shield to his forearm and fired two beam rifles at him. He dodged to the side and tried to get close, but Naruto wouldn't let him get away. Damn, Ichika thought, and flew higher into the air. Naruto watched this and followed him. He tracked Ichika as best he could, but he always seemed to miss his target. He was getting frustrated and looked over towards Han. She had just dodged a burst of bullets and was returning fire as soon as she was able to get her bearings. Naruto turned and saw Ichika, charging towards him, his sword out ready to strike. 
Naruto looked at him and frowned, flew back and leveled all of his blasters at Ichika. Dodge this, Naruto taunted and fired. Ichika's eyes went wide as he was met with a wall of beams. He tried to dodge but was hit in the leg, damaging his outer armor and causing him to drop his shields. Naruto smiled and started to press his attack when he was met with a hail of bullets. He dodged to his left and saw Charles in front of Ichika, his battle with Han forgotten. He looked at Naruto and started to fire. Naruto dodged to the side and pulled out his shield, letting it take the rest of the attack. He watched as Han made Charles and Ichika separate. Naruto took this time to fly over to her and see how she was doing. He checked her shields and saw that she was just above 400. He also noted that many of her weapons were damaged and she needed to change striker packs right away. Get behind me, he ordered. Naruto watched as Charles and Ichika charged him from different sides and let out a small gasp. Switch to the sword striker as soon as I start firing, Naruto commanded, opening fire. Ichika dodged to the side, but Charles kept up his charge. He had summoned his riot shield and charged towards Naruto as fast as he could. He reached Naruto and charged into him, sending him flying back. He tumbled across the ground and slammed into a wall, his shield taking a huge hit, falling from 550 to 360. He turned and dodged a blast from Charles's shotgun and returned fire. Naruto spun around another blast of the shotgun and drew his beam saber. He blocked Charles's next shot with his shield and swung his saber at his left side. Charles felt the bite of the saber and was sent to the side a few feet, his shields dropping to 200. He turned and saw Naruto flying towards him. He got up and dodged to the right, as Naruto brought the saber down on his head. He spun and kicked Naruto, sending him flying back. Naruto got up and looked at Charles, only to see a smile on his face. Naruto! Han cried. He turned to see her having a tough time with Ichika. Their swords were locked, and it was a battle of dominance that she was losing. He looked at Charles and watched him charge forward. Naruto blocked his attack, leveled one of his waste blasters, and fired it into Charles's chest at point-blank range. Everyone watched as Charles was launched across the field and landed in a heap of orange, his shields falling to 80. Naruto took this time to charge forward and push Ichika away from Han. He checked and saw that her shields had dropped to 25, and she knew she couldn't take another hit. He gave her a reassuring smile. You did great, he said, but I need you to fall back and switch back to long range. Okay, she responded, and flew toward the other side of the field. Naruto watched her go but didn't have time to make sure she was okay. He dodged a strike and spun around to face Ichika and Charles. Charles held a large sniper rifle in his hand and Ichika had his sword ready. This is going to suck, Naruto thought to himself leveling his shield and beam rifle. Charles fired his rifle and Naruto blocked it with his shield, only to be met with Ichika in front of him. Naruto barely managed to spin away from his attack and shot him in the back. Ichika flew forward a bit and Naruto began to rain fire onto him. Ichika dodged the attack and turned to see Naruto blocking fire from Charles. Naruto held his shield out, fired back at Charles, watched as he got a direct hit on his shoulder, dropping his shield to 15. Naruto was about to finish the attack but was blindsided by Ichika. He flew across the ground. A determined look slowly spread across his face. He turned and watched as Charles leveled his rifle at him. Oh crap, Naruto thought, as Charles fired at him. He knew he couldn't dodge and waited for the blast to hit but nothing came. He watched as Han flew in front of him and took the blast, but had enough time to hit Charles as well, dropping both of their shields to zero. He looked at Han who gave him a big smile. Kick his butt! she said and Naruto smiled. You got it, he said, turning toward Ichika. Let's go wild. Naruto charged, beam saber in hand. The sound of sabers clashing filled the air. Everyone watched as the pair was locked in a battle of blades. The broke apart and Naruto rushed Ichika. Naruto brought his saber towards Ichika right side. All Ichika could do was dodge. He tried to counter, but Naruto stopped his overhead strike with his shield and stabbed at him. Ichika was hit, and watched his shields drop to 190. Damn, I can only use Yukihira's ability two more times, he thought as he dodged Naruto's next barrage of attacks. He looked at Naruto, and knew he had to beat him to get the opportunity to fight Laura. He flew back and looked at Naruto. Let's end this, he said and Naruto smiled. Yes, let's he agreed and the pair charged. The attack seemed to be over in the blink of an eye. Both combatants didn't move for a few moments, when suddenly the sound of hissing filled the air. The freedom was down on one knee, shields at zero. Winners, Ichika Oromura and Charles Dunois, the announcer called and everyone cheered. Naruto landed on the ground as the freedom went into standby mode.
He knew his attack had connected, but he still lost. When Achika hit him, his shield just dropped all the way to zero. He knew he had a lot of shield left at least 300, but that one attack made it all go away. He turned and looked at the Bayakushiki. That is one interesting machine, he thought as he headed towards the launch area. He entered their waiting area and saw Han standing by the bench. She saw him, and he could see tears welling up in her eyes. She rushed him and tackled him to the ground tears streaming down her face. He held her as she cried. He couldn't help but feel sad at the loss. They had made it so far and had lost it in the end. Soon tears started to stream down his face, and the two partners cried in each other's arms. In control room, Maya watched as Naruto exited the field with a frown on her face. She couldn't help but feel for the young man. He had tried his best and had made it to the quarterfinals, only to lose. She turned and saw Shifuyu watching some of the recording, a look of serious concentration on her face. Maya looked at her fellow teacher and wondered what she was thinking. Shifuyu seemed to notice this and said, Naruto and Han would have won if not for Yukihira. Really? Maya asked. Yes, Shifuyu said. They had better teamwork and control over their machines. They made a few errors that could have been avoided, but overall they would have won. She rewound the recording to the part where Han was fighting Achika in the Sword Striker. This part could have gone better if Han was fighting Charles and Naruto fought Achika. Achika is a close-range fighter by nature, and Han couldn't keep up. She was lucky not to be hit with any direct attacks, but Achika still dropped her shields dangerously low. If Naruto was fighting him, he would have had a tougher time, due to the fact Naruto is decent at any range. Maya nodded in understanding, and watched as Shifuyu moved to the last attack of the fight. If Achika didn't have Yukihira, he would have lost. Naruto's shields at this point were at 300 while Achika's were at 190. Naruto scored a direct hit at his side making Achika's shields drop to 60. If Achika had a regular sword, he would only drop Naruto's shields to 250 because he scored a hit on his shoulder. All Naruto needed to do was fire his rifles, and he would have one, if that were the case. Shifuyu got up and walked towards the main window. But that wasn't the case and he lost to my idiot of a brother. But at least this will show Achika that hard work does pay off. Maya couldn't help but smile as Shifuyu acted like a big sister for a moment. She turned back to the screen and watched as Hookie and Laura won their fight, and the next match was them versus Achika and Charles. She turned to the computer console and watched as the screens prepared for the next fight. She wished she was able to leave and go check on Naruto, but her job came first, no matter how much it hurt. In stands, Cecilia had a small frown on her face. She had watched the fight between Achika and Naruto with much conflict tie on. She wanted both of them to win, but she didn't want either of them to lose well. She couldn't help but wonder what was going on within her. At first, she hated Achika, then she had grown to care for him after he had shown her what he was capable of. She cared for him, but then Naruto came along. He was entirely different from Achika, in some ways, but he had the similar fire inside of him. She remembers his hands as they guided hers in repairing blue tears. As she got to know the blonde and why he did what he did, she couldn't deny that he was taking the place of Achika. She had spent more time with Achika, but he didn't seem to catch on with her feelings. Naruto, on the other hand, listened to her and helped her. He even showed her how to do something she would have usually left to her research team. She saw that the next fight was starting and she got up. Rin was sitting next to her and wondered what was up. Hey Cecilia, where you headed? She asked. Cecilia turned stopped and turned. Just to check on a friend, she said and headed out of the stands. She headed into the locker room area and saw that it was deserted. She walked deeper into the stadium and arrived at Naruto's IS standby area. She saw that the door was closed and was a bit nervous to open it. She stood outside the door, frozen, wondering what she should do. What if he wanted to be left alone? What if he wasn't even there? She continued to debate with herself when the door opened and Naruto walked out. He saw Cecilia standing there staring off into space. Hey, he said, getting her attention. Cecilia flushed a bit. Hello, Naruto, she quietly greeted and gave him a hesitant smile. He gave her a small smile in return. What brings you down here? He asked and she began to be flustered. Well, I came to see how you were doing, she responded, looking away. It was a tough loss and I wanted to make sure you were okay. Naruto gave her a sad smile and sat down with his back to the wall. He sighed and looked towards the ceiling. I'm doing fine, he said as he stared into space. It just sucks to lose. Cecilia sat down next to him and listened to the silence settle between them. It's funny, he finally said, making her look at him in confusion. No matter how many times I look at it, I can't see how he beat me. I mean, I got the direct hit while he only got my shoulder. I should have had him. Cecilia looked at him 
and could see the frustration on his face. She looked away from him for a moment. It was the off-one ability of his sword, Cecilia replied, getting Naruto's attention. It is called the Barrier Void Attack. It basically destroys a shield with a single hit. That is why you lost. I see, Naruto replied with a look of enlightenment. They sat there in silence and Cecilia leaned her head against his shoulder. They both blushed a bit at the movement but stayed in silence. They just enjoyed the closeness they now shared. Suddenly the emergency alarm sounded and the stadium went into lockdown. Naruto and Cecilia both stood up and rushed into the IS standby area to watch the screen. Han saw the pair rush in and wondered why Cecilia was there. She didn't have the time to dwell on the thought when Naruto asked what had happened. Something happened with Laura's IS, she explained, addressing the pair before her. Charles was hitting her with his shield penetrator and she went berserk. They watched the screen and how Achika finally ended Laura Rampage. Naruto shook his head and walked towards the door. The girls looked at him as he walked out the door and wondered where he was headed. Next day, Naruto sat at his desk watching the craziness going on. He started his morning the same as usually with a sleeping Tabane in the bed next to him. He started to wonder if she was ever going to leave. Not that he wanted her to. She was a fun person to be around and not bad on the eyes either. He quickly changed into his school uniform and headed to breakfast where he was greeted by Han and Cecilia. He was surprised that Cecilia had joined him that morning as she usually ate with Achika. When he asked why she was eating with him, she just gave him a smile and said, just needed a change of scenery. Naruto just nodded and had a very enjoyable breakfast. Now he was in class watching as they got a new old student. It seemed that Charles was actually Charlotte. This explains so much, Naruto said as he watched Charlotte take her seat. What happened next was something that made him fall on the floor laughing. Laura had just claimed Achika as her bride, and he watched his hooky, Rin, and Charlotte call for his death. Most of the class was split between watching the group chasing after Achika or Naruto, rolling on the floor trying to catch his breath from all the laughing. Later on in the day, Naruto walked the hallways towards the student council room. He received a message stating that there was a meeting and his presence was required due to the fact that he was the vice president. He entered the council room only to be tackled to the ground by Han. She sat on his chest and gave him a big smile. Hi Naruto, she said happily. Naruto smiled and tried not to blush as he got a good eyeful of Han's panties. Iuna, istamrat. Can you please get off? Han nodded, stood up. Naruto smiled and got up. He saw that Tatanashi is there as well as Han's sister Utsuho. He took the seat marked vice, president, and sat down. He observed Han and Utsuho take their seats and wondered why Tatanashi was still standing. He got his answer when she straddled his lap and gave him a big smile. I missed you, Naruto she said and pushed herself against the blonde. Naruto blushed heavily and trying not to get excited. Sorry, Tayton, he said, his face completely covered by an unnatural shade of crimson. I was busy getting ready for the tournament. I know, she whined and gave him a sultry smile, but I was lonely. Naruto was about to apologize again when she put a finger against his mouth, silencing him. I'll let you make it up to me by taking me to dinner, she decided and the blonde nodded automatically. She smiled and hugged him tightly. She quickly ended the hug and spun around. Okay, let's start the meeting. Naruto was still flustered with Tatanashi still in his lap. Hey, Tayton, he said, getting her to look back at him. Are you going to take your seat? She gave him another sultry look that made his heart race. I am in my seat, she whispered into his ear. Soon smoke could be seen coming out of his ears and Tatanashi couldn't help but giggle. The weekend, Maya waited by the train station. She wore a black dress that showed off her curves beautifully. Naruto had found her during the week, and they set up their dinner date. She was so excited and spent most of the day getting ready. When she left her room, she was stopped by Shifuyu. She looked over Maya and wondered where she was headed. All dolled up. Maya, she said with questioning look. Where are you off to? Maya smiled sweetly. Just out, she replied and left before Shifuyu could find out more. So, there she was waiting on Naruto. Hello, beautiful a voice said from behind her. She turned to see Naruto standing there. He was wearing a suit with a thin orange tie. She could help but blush. He looked so handsome. Hello, Naruto, she said stumbling through her words. Naruto smiled and blushed. She's so beautiful, he thought, as he looked over the goddess before him. So, you ready to go? He asked and Maya nodded. They boarded the train and headed into town. They stood in silence for the ride, not knowing what to talk about. This continued until they were seated at the restaurant. They were seated at a gourmet French restaurant in the middle of town. It was one of the most exclusive restaurants around, 
and they had been shown to a table without any waiting. Now, the period of silence had continued to the table. Maya looked at her date and wondered what was going on in his mind. They hadn't said a word since they left the school and she was getting nervous. She was about to say something when Naruto looked at her and gave her a smile causing her to stop in her tracks. So how are you? He asked. I am good, she replied and gave him a smile. Just bit nervous. Naruto nodded and gave her an understanding look. Same here, he said, and they both started to laugh. This caught the attention of some of the people near them, but they soon returned to their meals. Soon their laughter died down, and they settled into light conversation. Their food quickly arrived, and they ate, still talking between bites. Maya looked at Naruto, who was currently eating some cooked salmon. So, Naruto, she said getting his attention, what was it like for you growing up? Naruto stopped eating for a moment, and was silent. He seemed to stare off into space for a moment. He turned his attention back to Maya. A tender smile spread across his face. It was an experience, he began. Unlike most kids, I didn't go out to play or go to school. I grew up around IS. As you know, my parents started and owned Kanoha Industries. We were a successful programming company until the introduction on the IS. So, we switched to IS development. Instead of toys, I got to learn how to program and build IS parts and frames. Actually, my mom told me she tried to give me regular toys, but I always seemed to push them away and pick up tools. It was a lot of fun. He face grew sad. Until the day we were attacked. Maya remembered seeing the report of the news. It was over eight years since the attack, but it seemed to still have an effect on Naruto. What happened? She asked. Naruto looked away and waved over the waiter. Can I get the check please? He asked. Maya was about to say something when the waiter returned. Naruto quickly paid for the meal and offered Maya his hand. He gave her a sad smile and a look that told her to wait for his answer. She took his hand, and he led her from the restaurant into the busy streets. They walked in silence, side by side, hand in hand until they reached a cliff overlooking the ocean. Naruto and Maya stood by the railing overlooking the water. My dad and I were working on a new blaster for the prototype we were building, he explained. A sudden explosion rocked the complex and dad went to check it out. I was still eight years old at the time, so I really didn't pay attention to what was going on. Dad came running in and picked me up. I started to freak out and saw an IS fly in behind him. He threw me into the vault and closed the door. I watched through the camera as my dad fought off the attacker only to get shot by her partner. Maya looked at him with sadness in her eyes. She had never dreamed that he had gone through an experience like that. She wrapped herself around him and held him tightly. Naruto wrapped his arms around her, thankful for the comfort. The soon broke apart and stared into each other's eyes. Naruto couldn't help but thinking she was beautiful. He leaned in for a kiss and she leaned in as well. Soon their lips were locked and Maya wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck. The moon cast its light on the pair, making every other light seem dull. They broke the kiss and separated. Naruto looked at Maya and couldn't help but blush. Wow, was all he could say as he looked at woman before him. Maya was the same. She couldn't help but stare in silence at Naruto. The blushing pair soon joined hands once again and headed back to the school. The next day, Naruto was in his IS storage area working on the freedom. He couldn't help but smile as he thought of the date he went on the other night. After he had left Maya, he couldn't help but wish they could have spent more time together. But he quickly pushed those thoughts out of his mind. He had just entered his room when he saw Debane sitting on her bed, her computer floating in front of her. She looked up and smiled. Narakuen, she shouted as she tackled him to the ground. Naruto looked up at Tabane and gave her a small smile, hiding the fact her tackle hurt. Hey, Tabane, he squeaked. Hi, Narakuen, she said with a big smile. I missed you. He smiled. I wasn't gone for that long, he reminded her. She gave him a pout made her look cute. But, I wanted to spend time with Narakuen, she pouted sweetly. Naruto tried to fight it, but in the end, he fell to the beauty that is Tabane. How about I make it up to you, he sighed. She gave him a big nod and an eager grin. Okay then, we will do anything you want. Tabane gave him a sultry smile that sent shivers up his spine. Okay then, I'll let you know when I am ready, she grinned. Naruto just nodded as she leaned in close to him, their noises touching. Night Narakuen, she said standing. Naruto just laid there, slowly counting back from 100. I am in trouble, Naruto thought as he stared at the ceiling. As he looked back on the previous night, he failed to notice Shifuyu enter the room. She saw him standing over the freedom not doing anything, and wondered what he was thinking. Naruto, she called. At the sound of his name he turned to see who it was, 
only for him to lose his balance and fall to the ground, hard. Ow! Naruto groaned when he noticed someone at his side. He was surprised to see Shifuyu kneeling over him. Are you all right? She asked worried. He just nodded, but she didn't want to take any chances. She helped him sit up and gave him a worried look. Let's get you to the nurse's office, she said, but Naruto resisted. I'm fine, he stated, rising to his feet. Shifuyu gave him a stern look that made him freeze into place. You fell onto concrete and might have hit your head. You are going to the nurse's office and that is final, she demanded and Naruto just nodded in agreement. They headed toward the nurse's office and Shifuyu watched over the blonde as the nurse checked him out. The nurse turned to Shifuyu. Apart from some bumps and bruises, he's fine, she assured her. He doesn't have a concussion. Thank you, Shifuyu said and looked over to Naruto who sat on one of the beds. He had an annoyed look on his face. She walked over to him. Let's go, she said. They headed out of the nurse's office and walked around the campus. Naruto noticed that they were headed toward the train station and wondered what Shifuyu wanted from him. They arrived at the platform and waited for the train to arrive. As they stood in silence, Naruto began to wonder what was going on. I need your help with something, Shifuyu explained, making Naruto wonder if she could read his mind. Okay, what do you need my help with? He asked, but she didn't answer. As she boarded the train, Naruto followed her and unexpectedly, Tabane appeared out of nowhere. Hi Narakuen, Chifchan, she said with a smile. Shifuyu looked at her friend and shook her head. I brought him, she said giving Tabane a stern look. But does he really need to be here? Tabane gave Shifuyu a stern look. Of course, she demanded. It is essential for him to be here. Naruto watched as they talked and got lost in the conversation. Um, why am I here? He asked but again received no answer. They pulled into the station and exited the train. Let's go Narakuen, Tabane shouted grabbing Naruto's hand and raced out of the train. Naruto tried to stand as Tabane dragged him down the street to the mall. Ever since they had departed from the train, Naruto had had a feeling of dread. He felt Tabane come to a stop. Only then was he finally able to get off the ground. He frowned when he saw where they were. They had stopped in front of a large department store. Oh no, Naruto thought as Tabane dragged him inside. Shifuyu followed the pair. She wondered why Tabane wanted Naruto to join them on this trip. She had planned on going shopping later, but Tabane had spent most of the morning convincing her that they should go shopping that day. She saw Tabane turn into the bathing suit section of the store inside. This is not going to end well, she thought to herself, as she followed the pair. Naruto looked around and saw many different, colorful, and revealing outfits all around him. He turned and saw a smile on Tabane's face that sent shivers down his spine. Why do I feel I'm going to enjoy and hate this at the same time? He thought to himself, as Tabane started to browse the racks. She pulled one off the rack and showed it to Naruto. It was a two-piece suit that left nothing to the imagination. It was the same color as Tabane's hair. What do you think of this one? She asked, and Naruto just shrugged. It's nice, he offered, and Tabane nodded before putting it on her arm. She proceeded to ask the same question about three different suits. One was a one-piece. It was silver and was very low-cut, showing all the way to her belly button. Next was a striped two-piece which was blue and white. The bottom was a very low cut. Finally, there was another two-piece that tied together at the front of the top. It was a very sexy red. She finished picking the swimming suits she wanted and headed toward the changing room. Tabane gave him a sultry smile making Naruto blush. I only be a minute she said and closed the curtain behind her. Naruto just stood frozen at the spot, only for Shifuyu to tap him on the shoulder, making him jump. She chuckled at his reaction and walked into the dressing room next to Tabane. No peeking, she ordered, giving him a death glare. Naruto just nodded, not wanting to die. He watched as the curtain closed and he let out another sigh. Naruto stood next to the wall and wondered what he was going to do. He closed his eyes and let his mind wander to all that had happened in the past few months and couldn't help but smile. He never had been this happy in a long time. He saw all the people he had met and the bonds he had made. Soon a few people came to the front of his mind. First was Maya. He couldn't help but smile even bigger as he thought of the green-haired, assistant teacher. She was truly one of a kind. She was timid but strong at the same time. Next Tatanashi appeared, and he couldn't help but sigh and then smile. She was different. She was sultry one moment, and cute the next. She always knew the ways to make him blush. Next was Tabane. She was fun to be around. She was one of the few people he could really talk to about IS development, without it going over their heads. She was childish at times, yet so sultry the next. At least there never a dull moment when she around, he said to himself, 
with a light chuckle. Next Han appeared in all her perkiness. He couldn't help but be happy when she was around. She was always so optimistic about everything. It was infectious. She could always brighten a room. Truly one of a kind, he said, as he glanced towards the ceiling. Soon Cecilia took her place on the stage that was his mind, and the smile once again returned. Even though he had known her the least, she had become precious to him. When she first asked him to help fix her IS, he was surprised. She was usually with Ichika and his group of girls. He was a bit cautious of her at first, but she turned out to be a fun and caring person. When she came and checked on him after his fight with Ichika, he couldn't help express a grin. She could have gone to Ichika and congratulated him on his win, but she came to comfort him instead. She managed to capture a spot in his heart without him even realizing it. Then there is her, Naruto said, as he thought of Shifuyu. She was the one that confused him the most. When they first met, he wanted to punch her in the face. That soon changed as he got to know her, and saw that she was actually a very nice person once you got past her hard exterior. He remembered when she showed him the underground research area. He laughed to himself as he remembered her blush. She was someone he wanted to get to know better. As he continued to think about the girls, he failed to notice Cecilia walking toward him. She had noticed him in the store and wondered what he was doing in the women's section. She was searching for the perfect swimming suit to grab his attention. She smiled to herself as her feelings for the blonde were brought to the forefront of her mind. She was more sure than ever that he was the one for her. So, when she saw him standing near the changing rooms, she wondered why he was there. She walked over to him and could see he was deep in thought. Naruto, she said making him jump. Naruto turned and saw Cecilia standing there and the color drained from his face. Hey Cecilia, he said, trying to gain his composure. Cecilia gave Naruto a questioning look. Naruto, why are you here in the ladies' swimming suit section? Naruto opened and closed his mouth several times trying to think of what to say when a curtain flew open. Tabane stepped out in the silver, low cut, one piece, smiling. How do I look Narakuen? she asked. Naruto just stared. Cecilia looked on in anger and wondered who the hussy was who was trying to get her man. Naruto, on the other hand, was trying not to get a nosebleed at the sight of Tabane. She was stunning in the bathing suit, and the way it drew his eyes towards certain areas of her form wasn't helping the matter either. He kept his eyes on her face, not waiting to look lower in case he passed out. I, it Lou, looks great, he stammered. Tabane smiled. She pulled him into her cleavage and squeezed him hard. Glad you like it, she whispered into his ear. She let him go and gave him a sly smile. I will try on the next one, I won't be long, she said, and stepped back into the changing room. Cecilia was fuming, sharp. Piercing daggers flew from her eyes, toward Tabane. Naruto felt a chill down his spine and turned to face Cecilia. Cecilia gave him a very sweet smile that made him take a step back out of fear. Who was that? She asked with a bit of venom in her voice. That is Tabane, he said. She's a friend. Tabane. Cecilia pondered. She knew the name from somewhere when suddenly it came to her. As in Tabane Shinonono? She asked, and Naruto nodded. She looked at the blonde with shock. He knows Tabane Shinonono. Cecilia was deep in thought as she sized up her competition. She was the creator of the IS and one of the leading designers as well. She had designed Achika's IS and now she was here with Naruto. I will defeat her, she thought to herself. Naruto, on the other hand, was a bit confused. After she found out who Tabane was, Cecilia had been unusually quiet. This unnerved him quite a bit. Are you okay? He asked, pulling Cecilia out of her thoughts. Cecilia returned to reality and gave him a smile. I am fine, she said, as a fiendish plan formed in her head. I am just fine. Can you help me? She asked. He nodded. Great, she exclaimed as she ran, pulling a swimming suit of the rack before entering a changing room. Be out in a flash. Naruto nodded and let out a sigh. If this keeps up, I might be taken out on a stretcher he said as a curtain opened, revealing Shifuyu. She stepped out in a two-piece, black swimming suit that hugged her curves well. Naruto looked at her with his mouth open. She was stunning. It fit her perfectly. As he stared at the goddess before him, he failed to notice the blush on her face. Shifuyu was surprised by the blonde's reaction to the way she looked, resulting in her reddened face. It soon left her face as quickly as it came. She faced the changing room before turning her head to look at the blonde. Close your mouth or you will catch flies, she said and stepped back into the changing room. She planned to buy the suit as soon as she changed. Naruto was brought out of his stupor by her words and shook his head. He turned around and started to count back from 100. This is getting a little too hot to handle, 
he said to himself as he tried to calm down. Oh, Naruto, he heard Cecilia call. He turned to see her in a blue two-piece suit. He was once again speechless. She was stunning in the suit. It flattered her form nicely. Cecilia smiled as she watched his reaction. Should I buy this one? She asked. He simply nodded dumbly. She grinned and entered the changing room, happy with the reaction she had gotten from the blonde. Naruto came to his sense one again and turned, only to see Tabane step out in the red two-piece. As he looked at her, his brain overloaded from everything and he fell to the ground. She watched him fall and smiled. I guess this is the one, she said, and re-entered the changing room. A few days later, Naruto sat at his laptop, his eyes closed in frustration. He had installed the Dargoon system onto the Freedom and was now running tests to make sure it worked. Unfortunately, the Dragoon system was not activating at all. It seemed that the linkage between the bits and the IS was not connected as they should, and he had no way to fix it. He looked over the designs and wondered what went wrong, but couldn't seem to find it. Damn it! He shouted, rising out of his chair. He walked over to the Freedom and stared intently at it. Why won't it work? He shouted. QB watched her master and walked over to him before touching his leg to get his attention. He looked down at the fox. She looked up at him with a reassuring look. He smiled as she looked up at him. Thanks, Q, he said with a smile. What would I do without you? She smiled as he picked her up. Let's get out of here. They headed out of the IS storage area, back toward the dorms. It was a glorious evening that made him happy. The way the sun cast its last light on the ground as he walked, the sound of the waves as they moved, he had to admit this was a nice place. He continued to walk when he saw Maya out of the corner of his eye. He turned towards her and smiled. Maya, he called. She turned, her face brightening at the sight of his face. Naruto, she said with a huge smile on her face. How are you? He smiled back at her. I am doing great, he said as he looked into her eyes. Just tired. Well, maybe I can help with that, Maya said and grabbed his hand. She pulled him towards the train and soon they were headed into town. Naruto watched as Maya directed him towards a small shop, a little bit off the train. It was a karaoke room. She gave him a huge smile. Come on, she said, leading him inside. Sit, she ordered. What is she up to? He thought, as she chose a song. She looked over at him, a sly grin spreading across her face. Ever since their date the previous weekend, she seemed to want to spend more time with him. Unfortunately, she had been too busy to get together with the blonde. So when she saw him walking towards her, she decided to make time. Now she was desperately thinking of a song to sing, but nothing was coming to mind. Naruto saw that she was getting a bit flustered and grinned. He got up and came up behind her, pressing himself against her. This made her squeak in surprise. Let me go first, he suggested. She nodded quickly, in agreement. He looked over the list and tried to find a song he liked. He finally found one and saw that it was a duet. He smiled to himself and turned towards Maya. I am going to need a bit of help with this one. Unforgettable. Nate and Natale King Cole. Unforgettable. That's what you are. Unforgettable. Though near or far. Like a song of love that clings to me. How the thought of you does things to me. Never before. Has someone been more. Unforgettable. In every way. And forevermore. That's how you'll stay. That's why, darling, it's incredible. That someone so unforgettable. Thinks that I am. Unforgettable, too. Interlude. As the interlude played. Naruto spun Maya around the room. Maya blushed and Naruto pulled her close as the song lyrics once again appeared on the screen. Unforgettable. In every way. And forevermore. That's how you'll stay. Naruto sat down and drew Maya close to him, making her settle on his lap. She smiled and looked him in the eyes, her feelings shining through. That's why, darling, it's incredible. That someone so unforgettable. Thinks that I am. Unforgettable, too. The music soon faded away. But the pair didn't notice because as the last line was sung they were soon joined at the lips, their passion shining through. Out in the hallway, one of the attendants wondered why she couldn't hear any music. She walked towards the room and peeked, her face turning red. She headed back to the main desk as quickly as she could. Unfortunately for her, she couldn't get the picture of Naruto and Maya making out, out of her mind. Week later, Naruto smiled as he looked out at the sea. It's a nice day, he said as he walked onto the beach. He was wearing a pair of black on orange, swimming trucks, and no shirt. He smiled as he looked out at the water. He turned and saw the rest of the class running towards the beach. He watched and tried not to pass out from all the beautiful forms in front of him. He turned back to the water and sighed. 
Suddenly, he felt a pair of soft pillows against his back. Hi, Narakuin, Tabane said as she wrapped he arms around his neck. I am so happy to be at the beach with you. S, same here, Naruto stammered, trying not to fall down. Tabane smiled and pressed herself against him more. Naruto began to turn as red as a tomato, while the rest of the class looked on. Cecilia and Maya were fuming as they watched Tabane, holding Naruto in her arms, and planned to get him away from her. Shifuyu watched the scene and sighed. She walked over and bashed Tabane on the head. Stop, she ordered, as Tabane held her head, crying anime tears. Chichan is mean, Tabane whined. I just wanted to spend time with Narakuin. You don't have to hang on him, she said, and turned toward the water. If this keeps up, I'm not going to survive the trip, Naruto said to himself, as he laid on the sand. Suddenly a shadow was cast over him. He opened his eyes and saw Cecilia standing over him. Hi Naruto, she said sweetly. Naruto looked at her and smiled back. Hi Cecilia, what can I do for you? He asked. She held up a bottle of suntan lotion. Can you help me put this on? She asked. Naruto looked at her with surprise. You want me to do what? He asked. She smiled and lay down next to him. Can you please put this on my back? She said again and untied the straps of her top. Naruto stared at her bare back, his body frozen in place. His mind was complete blank. Come on, she said making him come out of his stupor. Sure, Naruto responded, and squirted some of the lotion into his hand. He stared at her bare back and slowly started to rub his hands together. He spread the lotion around and started to rub it into her back. Cecilia let out a small moan when Naruto's lotion-covered hand touched her back. Cold, she thought, but Naruto's brain was frozen from hearing the moan. Cecilia wondered why he stopped and turned her head. It's okay, she said to him. Please continue. Naruto nodded, and once again rubbed the lotion onto her back. Cecilia released another moan as he moved his hands over her form. Her body began to get hot. She started to breath heavily as he continued. He blushed as he ran his hands all over her back and was almost done. He rubbed the last of the lotion into her back and lifted his hand from her back. This made Cecilia whine in disappointment, not wanting it to stop. She turned and looked at him. Can you get my legs and my bottom? She asked. Naruto stared at her in complete shock. He was frozen for a moment before nodding. He poured the lotion into his hand and rubbed it in a bit before starting on her lower legs. As his hands moved up her legs, Cecilia couldn't stifle a moan of pleasure. Naruto shivered when he heard this had to stop when he reached her inner thigh. Cecilia wondered why he stopped when she felt his hand move against her left thigh. She shivered as his hands traveled around her leg and couldn't help but moan loudly. Suddenly, she was surrounded by a bunch of girls who were jealous of what was going on. Hey, I want Naruto to rub lotion on me too, one cried, and tried to pull Naruto away. Cecilia got up and gave the girls a stern look. Leave us alone, she said. Everyone suddenly became quiet. She then noticed the soft breeze against her chest and remembered she was topless. Naruto was beat red and quickly turned his head away. Cecilia looked at him with shock before slapping him. Pervert, she shouted. Naruto fell back and stared at the sky, in a daze. Cecilia looked at him with a huge blush on her face and let out a sigh. Damn, it was just getting good, she told herself as she finished tying her top. While this was going on, Han and her friends grabbed Naruto and dragged him towards the water. Okay, girls on three, Han said. They picked him up by his arms and legs and started to swing him. One, Han said as he started to swing higher. Two, and Tichari, they let go of him and he went sailing into the water. Naruto was instantly brought out of his daze and sat up. Who, what, when, he said as he stood up, only to see Han and her friends laughing. He gave them a stern look. Did you throw me into the water? He asked, but they couldn't answer because they had yet to stop laughing. He looked at them, and an evil smile appeared on his face. He ran over and picked up Han. Han was laughing when suddenly she was lifted into the air. She was startled and turned to see Naruto holding her in his arms. He gave her a big grin before running towards the water. Han figured out what was going on in his mind, but it was already too late. Naruto had jumped as high as he could. They sailed through the air before hitting the water, Han screaming all the way. They both came up for air and Han gave Naruto a smile. Let's do that again, she shouted, much to his surprise. But he quickly nodded and they headed out of the water. Everyone watched as Naruto again picked up Han and jumped in the water with her in his arms. I want to try. Someone shouted as Naruto got out of the water. He saw most of the class standing around him. Who's next? 
he said, with a smile on his face, before he was tackled by the horde of girls. He struggled to get free so he could get them organized, but he was stuck. Well, this is a good way to go, he said as he felt their bodies press into his. That feels nice. Get off him, a voice screamed, grabbing everyone's attention. They all turned and saw Cecilia standing over them. This is improper for girls our age. Unhand him this instant. Everyone slowly got off the blonde, except for Han, who somehow managed to end up in his arms again. Naruto smiled at Cecilia and looked down at Han. Cecilia looked at the two of them, her body surrounded in a black aura. Han, will you please remove yourself from his arms, she said, a little too sweetly. Han shook her head no. He promised me another ride, Han whined and looked at Naruto. Naruto looked at Han, then to Cecilia. I am so dead, he thought, as he watched Cecilia's aura get even darker. How about he gives you a ride after me? Han said and Cecilia looked at her strangely. Naruto watched her and noticed a smile appear on her face. That is fair, she decided, making the other girl's face bomb. That hypocritical, one girl complained. But Cecilia gave her a cold look. No, it is not, she simply stated. I said it was improper to pile on a boy like you were doing, not to ride in his arms. That seemed to quiet everyone else, and Naruto just sighed to himself. He smiled at Han and looked around. He saw a cliff not too far off and smiled. Come on, he said to the pair and headed off towards the cliff, Han still in his arms. Everyone watched as he traversed the beach with Han. Most of the girls were green with envy. He reached the cliff and smiled. Hold on tight, he said and broke into a sprint. Everyone watched in awe as Naruto jumped of the cliff, Han still in his grasp. They sailed through the air for a few moments, before hitting the water. They soon surfaced, Naruto wearing a huge smile on his face. Han smiled back as they headed back to shore. Naruto soon arrived at the top of the cliff and found Cecilia waiting for him. It my turn now, she said eagerly. Naruto slowly lifted her into his arms. She smiled and leaned her head against his chest, making his heart begin to race. Ready? he asked. Cecilia shook her head. Can't we stay like this for a moment? she asked. Naruto just nodded. She smiled to herself. She had got what she wanted to be held in his strong arms and never to leave. He looked down at her and saw the peace on her face. She opened her eyes and looked up at him. I'm ready, she said. He backed up a bit and started in a light run. Soon he gained speed and held Cecilia even closer. They reached the edge of the cliff and Naruto jumped off with all his might. Everyone watched as they soared through the air. Cecilia was screaming at the top of her lungs, in terror. Naruto gave her arm a squeeze telling her he would protect her. That didn't stop her from screaming, but it did comfort her. They soon hit the water with a loud splash. They soon surfaced and Naruto flashed a smile. Cecilia smiled back and couldn't wait to continue spending time with the blonde. They got back to the beach, when Naruto was grabbed by Han and dragged towards the volleyball area. Let's play, she said. He took one side, with Han and Cecilia on his team. Their opponents were Charlotte, Laura, and Ichika. Naruto smiled as Han served the ball sending it straight towards Charlotte. She set it up for Laura who jumped and spiked it towards Naruto. He saw the ball coming and was able to stop the spike and get the ball up into the air. Cecilia saw this, charged forward, and set the ball up high in the air. Naruto jumped as high as he could and spiked the ball towards the ground. Ichika dived for it but missed. Naruto smiled as they got the point. Soon the game was going once again and the ball was in the air. The other girls gathered around and watched the match as it progressed. So far Naruto's team was winning by two points, but Ichika's team wasn't giving up. It was the game point. It was Naruto's turn to serve. He looked over at the opposing team and flashed them a smile. Here we go, he said, tossed the ball into the air, jumped up, and hit it over the net, toward Laura. She was able to get the ball in the air, and set it for Charlotte, who sent it towards Han. Han was able to get her hands under it, but she couldn't get the ball high enough to get it over the net. Naruto dove, and hit the ball as hard as he could. Cecilia, seeing this, ran and jumped, getting a good spike on the ball, only for Ichika to set it up for Charlotte, who sent it back over. Damn, Naruto muttered, as he watched the ball sail over to their side. Cecilia waved, signaling that she had it, and set it for Naruto. He smiled and spiked the ball as hard as he could. Everyone watched in anticipation, as the ball sailed down to the ground scoring another point. Yes, Cecilia cried, tackling the blonde. Soon Han joined her. Naruto blushed as the two girls hugged him tightly. Let's see if you can do it again, a new voice said. 
The trio turned to see Shifuyu, Maya, and Tabane standing there. Naruto stared at the three and tried not to faint from shock. They all looked stunning in their swimming suits. Maya wore a yellow two-piece that showed off her body well, while Shifuyu and Tabane wore the ones that they had picked with him. Cecilia saw the three women standing there and gave them a look. Of course we can, and we will win, she said and Han nodded in agreement. Naruto stood up and gave them a smile. Bring it, he said, and the game was on. Later that evening, after the beach, everyone had retired to the inn to relax and prepare for the upcoming lesson the next day. Naruto sighed in exhaustion as he sat in the male side of the hot springs. Ichika had already left, leaving him all alone. He suddenly heard the door open and saw Debane walk out with a towel wrapped around her body. Naruto saw this and quickly turned. His face became a cherry red at the sight of the red head. Why is she on this side of the bath? He thought as he turned away from her. She smiled as she saw Naruto with his back facing her. Ah, he's so sweet, she thought to herself as she entered the water. She walked over towards the blonde and wrapped her arms around his neck, pressing herself against his back. Naruto body stiffened, and Tabane grinned. Hello, Naruto, she quietly whispered into his ear. Hi, Ta, Tabane, he said, as he tried to control himself. Why are you on this side of the bath? I wanted to spend time with you, Narukuin, she whispered into his ear leaning against him even more. Naruto began to lose his mind, but he managed to gain control once again, but yet unable to form complete sentences. Tabane smiled and took advantage of the silence. So Naruto, I was wondering would you wash my back, she said, sending a shiver down his spine. I really have a hard time doing it myself, so your help would be much apparicated. Naruto just sat there not moving, his mind trying to keep in control of his body. His mind was losing the fight. He was about to turn around, when the door opened and Shifuyu stepped inside. She wore a bathing suit and gave Tabane a stern look. Tabane, what did I tell you? She said, with a hint of anger in her voice. Hi, Chichan, she replied. I was just getting Narakuin to help me wash my back. Shifuyu entered the water and pulled Tabane off the blonde. You are in so much trouble, she said, making Tabane give her a forced smile. She turned and saw Naruto, still frozen, and pushed him into the water. Naruto was instantly up, wow, what, he said, and looked around, but Shifuyu had already left with Tabane. Later, Naruto smiled as he entered his room. Dinner was good, and he had spent most of his time with Cecilia and Han, laughing and talking. He smiled as he remembered both of their smiles. I am a really lucky guy, he said to himself as he closed the door behind him. He looked around the room and saw it was one of the suites. He saw Achika's bag on one side of the room, but also another one next to it. I wonder who else is rooming with us. This question was soon answered when the door opened behind him and he turned to see Shifuyu standing there. Naruto just stared at her in shock. What the hell is she doing here? He thought as he looked at the brunette. Why are you staring? She asked him with a hint on annoyance in her voice. Naruto snapped out of his daze and shook his head. Are you rooming with us? He asked and she nodded. Why? He blurted. I am here to make sure that you and Ichika stay in this room while we are on this trip, she said. I don't want to find you asleep in another room, or you will wish you never came to this school. Naruto nodded and sighed. Suddenly an idea came to his mind. I won't leave the room or Amira sensei Naruto said. I'd rather just spend my night with you. Shifuyu blushed at this, making Naruto smile. The blush quickly left her face, and she gave him a stern glare. If you try anything, they will have to take you home in a box, she said with a deadly smile. Naruto smiled back, not scared one bit. Then I will die a happy death, he replied making her frown. He smiled and put away his stuff for the night. Ichika came in and could see the tension in the room. Hi, he said, but no one acknowledged his presence. He walked over to his things when Shifuyu waved him over and ordered him to give her a massage. He sighed and started to do as she asked. Apparently, he started in the wrong spot and she gave him a disappointed look. Not that hard, she complained. He was about to start again, when Naruto grabbed his wrist. I'll do it, he said quietly. Ichika just nodded, not wanting to incur Shifuyu's wrath. Naruto smiled and moved his hand to her shoulders and slowly started to rub them. Shifuyu let out a sigh of approval. That's it, she said, a small moan escaping her lips. Naruto slowly and skillfully moved his hand up and down her back, giving Shifuyu the best massage she had had in years. He reached a tense spot and slowly started to release the tension. All right there, she said the pleasure oozing in her voice. Suddenly the sound of the door breaking filled the air, and Shifuyu turned to see Hookie, 
Cecilia, Rin, Charlotte, Laura, Maya, and Han fall through the door. Naruto stared at the group and smiled. So what brings you to our humble abode, he said, surprising Shifuyu at the sight of Naruto leaning over her. Before she could say anything, she watched as all the girls were relieved about something. She got up and looked at them. What's going on? She asked. Everyone started to talk at once, but she held up her hands and everyone fell silent. Ichika, go get us some drinks, Shifuyu ordered. He rushed out of the room and Shifuyu turned to look at Naruto. Are you up to giving more massages? Naruto smiled. I would love to, he said with a huge smile on his face. He spread out his futon and looked over towards the group. So who is first? He asked. Naruto was slowing waking up the next morning, when he felt an unfamiliar weight laying on top of him. He slowly opened his eyes and saw red. He closed his eyes again and reopened them. Again, red filled his vision. He saw the red move and Tabane's face appear. He sighed to himself as he laid his head down on his pillow. How did she end up there? He thought as he tried to move, but she held him in place. Might as well enjoy it, he thought as he felt her assets press against his body. No, bad Naruto. No acting like Aero Sinan. Suddenly the door opened. Shifuyu walked in, grabbed the sleeping Tabane, and dragged her out of the room. She turned towards Naruto who pretended to be sleeping. I know you're awake, she said and Naruto sat up. Go get ready. We have training in few hours. Yes, Oromura Sensei, Naruto said, with a mock salute, only to receive a pillow to the face. He sighed as he got up and started to get ready for the day. With Shifuyu and Tabane. Shifuyu dragged her friend to her room and threw her on the bed. Tabane hadn't noticed and was still asleep. Wake up, Shifuyu said with conviction. Tabane's eyes slowly opened and she looked around. Where's Narakuen? She asked as she sat up. She turned and saw Shifuyu. Chichan wears Narakuen. He was my pillow. Did you take Narakuen for your pillow? Wahaha Chichan mean. Suddenly Tabane felt the binding of a roll book connect with the top of her head. Shifuyu gave her a stern look but a hint of a blush still adorned her face. You were supposed to be finishing Hookie's machine, Shifuyu said. But Chichan, Tabane whined. I want to sleep with Narakuen. You need to finish your work, Shifuyu replied. Tabane looked at her friend. But, I am done, she said, getting a surprised look from Shifuyu. I finished after everyone went to bed. Well, since I am done, I am going to go back to Narakuen. Shifuyu grabbed Tabane by the back of her shirt and held her tightly. Oh, no you don't, she said as Tabane struggled to get free. He has to get ready, and you have to be ready to present the Akatsubaki to Huki. Tabane hung her head and nodded. She walked out of the room with a sad look on her face, but when she saw Naruto walk out of the bathroom, she got an idea. I'll just give Narakuen a goodbye present before I go, she thought. She headed toward the blonde, only to feel an intense, evil glare directed towards her. She slowly turned her head and saw Shifuyu watching her. She pouted and headed out of the room. Shifuyu watched her go and turned towards the blonde. This is going to be a long day, she thought, and left to get ready for the day. Later on, Naruto stood next to Ichika as he and the others waited for Shifuyu to start the lesson. He just sighed as he looked around, noticing that everyone there had a personal IS except one person, Hooky. She was the odd girl out. He wondered why she was there, but his musing was cut short when Shifuyu addressed them. This lesson will take place shortly, she announced. Hooky, your machine has arrived. Everyone turned to look at Hooky who nodded and slowly walked forward. Suddenly, a large red blur came out of nowhere and tried to attack Hooky, but Shifuyu hit it with her roll book. Everyone watched in surprise as Tabane got up off the floor. Chichan is mean. She said with large cartoonish tears coming down her face. Everyone watched the scene with mixed expressions. Naruto just sighed. Typical Tabane. He thought as he watched Shifu yell at her friend. Soon everyone watched as Hookie was set up in her machine, Akatsubaki. It was a solid red hue with four diamond-shaped wings on its back. The legs and gauntlets were of a slim design, allowing for maximum range of motion. Naruto looked over the design and whistled. It was truly a thing of beauty. He looked at all the angles and the thruster placement. He was very impressed by the machine. Hookie was excited as she looked over all of the specs and gave Tabane a smile. She was soon off and flying high in the sky. Everyone watched in awe at her speed and wondered what it was capable of, if she pushed it to its limits. Naruto noted that it was most likely a closed combat machine and couldn't wait to see it in battle. While this was going on, Shifuyu got a call from the school and her face darkened. Signal for Hookie to come in, she ordered, and Ichika radioed for her to come down. 
Shifu you face the class. The lesson is over. Please head back to the inn. We have a situation that needs to be looked at. Everyone nodded, but Naruto couldn't help but worry as he saw the look of dread on Shifuyu's face. With the girls, it had been a few hours since Shifuyu had dismissed them from their lesson and they wondered what was going on. Cecilia was worried, but she didn't let it get in the way of her main focus, making Naruto hers. She looked at the other girls and wondered if they could help with this. Hey, she said, getting everyone attention. I was wondering if you could help me with something. What is it? Rin asked curiously. Cecilia was quiet for a moment, not knowing what to say. Charlotte could see she was having trouble. It's okay, she said. Just take your time. Cecilia gave her a smile of thanks. Well, it's like this, she started, and everyone listened. They're this guy I like. However, she was suddenly interrupted by Rin. Does this guy happen to be Ichika? Rin asked, giving her a stern look. If that's the case, then I'm not saying anything. Soon everyone was arguing over Ichika, and Cecilia was getting annoyed. It's not Ichika, she shouted at the top of her lungs. All of the girls looked at Cecilia with shock. She wasn't after Ichika, like the rest of them. So, who is it? Hooky asked, already having an idea as to who it was. Cecilia was quiet for a moment. It's Naruto, she finally said meekly. What? They all shouted, shaking the building. Cecilia covered her ears just in time and waited till everything was quiet. She removed her hands from her ears and looked at everyone. Yes, it is Naruto, she whispered. Laura looked at her with confusion. Why are you after Naruto? She asked. You were originally after Ichika, as we are. Charlotte, Hooky, and Rin gave Laura evil glares which she brushed off. You know it's true. Cecilia waited for them to stop arguing before she began. I don't know when it happened but Naruto just seemed to sneak up on me. It started when I asked him to help me repair Blue Tear. She paused for a moment, a small smile gracing her face. He made me help. He made you help? Rin said with shock. But, you don't know the first thing about IS maintenance. That is true, Cecilia said with a laugh. When we first started, I didn't even know how to use a screwdriver right. Yet, he was patient with me and always helpful. He always smiled and never ignored me when I talked to him. Ichika does that too, Charlotte said, the others nodding in agreement. Cecilia just looked at her friends. They didn't seem to understand. It's not just that, she said, as she tried to find the right words to explain. With Ichika, I felt as though I had met a man who proved to me he can be strong. But Naruto, he just is. He's always there when I need him and he confides in me, like when I want to see him after his fight with Ichika and Charlotte. He let me into his heart and told me how he felt about his loss. He treats me like I'm special, even when there are people around. He can, without even trying, make me feel like I'm the most important person. Hooky gave Cecilia a look of understanding. So, what's the problem? Rin asked. Well, I am not the only one after him, Cecilia sighed in annoyance. Who else is after him? Laura asked. Maybe we can have them, removed from the equation. No one answered the silver-haired girl due to the fact they were still in shock about her suggestion. We will file that idea for later, Charlotte said with a smile. Everyone else tried not to think of what she had planned. After a few moments of silence, Cecilia spoke. So far, all I know is that Tabane is after him. Tabane, Hooky said with a bit of shock in her voice. As in, my sister. Tabane? Cecilia nodded. Hooky just stared at her as if she was crazy. That's not possible. Trust me it is, Cecilia said. I met her when I saw Naruto shopping with her for swimming suits. She was on campus? Hooky said, with more anger in her voice. That what it seems, Cecilia said, wondering if it was better to have left Tabane out of the conversation. Will you excuse me for a moment? Hooky said quickly, and headed out of the room. Everyone watched as she left the room praying for, whomever was in her path, to get out alive. With Naruto. Naruto was in the portable IS research lab, working on one of his projects. It was an attachment for the freedom to add extra weapons and firepower. He called it the Meteor and hoped to get it up and running soon. He was almost done with the thrusters and couldn't help but smile. It was using the prototype of the GN drive. He had finally gotten it working, by accident. Flashback. He was working on the compression method, when Tabane jumped him. He was no longer paying attention to the algorithm, causing the experiment to spin the particles in all directions, finally compressing into a tight ball. He smiled as he watched it glow blue and couldn't help but shout out in happiness. I did it! He screamed at the top of his lungs and pulled Tabane into a hug. This made the girl blush, but Naruto didn't care. 
he had finally gotten the compression right. Now he was able to put the new engines to work as the power source for the meteors. End of flashback. He was attaching the last rocket launcher to the unit. When he heard the door open, he turned and saw Tabane standing there with a smile on her face. Inarukun. She said, what you doing? He grinned as he finished installing the rocket launcher. Just finishing the meteor, he explained. It's finally done. Tabane looked over the attachment and couldn't help but marvel at its design. It was a very easy mount and dismount system allowing for easy deployment. It was equipped with two energy cannons, twin beam blades, and a four rocket launchers. The most interesting part of the machine was its engines. They ran off compressed particles, and she couldn't wait to see them in action. So what's the plan now? She asked him. He just sighed as he sat down in a chair by the desk. Well, I need to test the GN drives to see if they work like they are supposed to, he said, glancing toward the meteor. I will do more testing, and then I'm going to install them into the Freedom. Tabane nodded and looked at the Freedom, which was in its charging area on the other side of the lab. Are you sure it can handle the power? The output of the GN drives is a lot more than what the Freedom is currently equipped with. Naruto nodded and gave her a concerned look. That's what worries me. He looked at the Freedom with affection in his eyes. The Freedom is a great machine, but I don't know if the specs will hold. I designed it so it could take a lot of power, but I really don't know if it will. Tabane walked over and put a reassuring hand on his shoulder. I know it will, she said with confidence. Freedom has the same dreams as you, and it will grow with you. So just trust in the freedom and nothing will go wrong. Naruto smiled, thanks to Bane, he said, and they both shared a laugh. Suddenly a brown blur flew by and Tabane was swept away. Naruto watched in shock as they disappeared. What was that? Naruto said to himself as he tried to wrap his mind around what had just happened. With Hookie and Tabane. Hookie stopped in an empty room and closed the door. She faced her sister with a serious look on her face. Tabane, have you been here all this time? She asked while Tabane looked back at her, confused. What do you mean, Hookie-chan? Hookie was quiet for a moment. Have you been here at IS Academy for the last few months? She asked. Of course I have Hookie-chan, Tabane said with a smile. Why are you here? Hookie asked, the anger evidence in her voice. I wanted to visit Narakuen, Tabane said with a smile. Hookie looked at her and thought, Narakuen? She questioned. You mean Naruto? Why? Tabane looked at Hookie and smiled. Narakuen is fun, she replied. He's smart and funny. He makes me laugh. Hookie looked at her sister and shook her head. How did you meet Naruto? She asked. Well, I contacted him when he first came to school, Tabane said with a smile. I saw his designs and wanted to get to know him. So you came to see his designs, Hookie concluded. But Tabane shook her head no. That nodded at all, she stated, as Hookie gave her a confused look. I wanted to get to know Narakuen. He is different. Hookie was about to ask what Tabane meant when her phone went off. She picked it up and saw that there was a meeting in the debriefing room. She turned and saw that Tabane was gone. Hookie sighed to herself in annoyance and headed towards the debriefing room. In debriefing room, Shifuyu looked around at the gathered students and gave them a serious look. Today the United States and Israel lost control of their new prototype, IS Silver Gospel. It is now resting about three miles away from here. The tactical map appeared on the floor in front of them. Currently, you are the only ones available to deal with this problem. So what is the plan? Charlotte asked, as she looked at the map. It is currently traveling toward an island, at Mach 3, that is not too far away from here. Shifuyu said, This operation is going to use Ichika's IS to take out the rogue IS with one strike. Ichika raised his hand and looked at his sister. But Bayakushiki is not fast enough to catch up with it, not even an ignition boost. I know how you can do it. A voice whispered and Tabane came down from the ceiling. Akatsubaki can go that fast with its fold-out armor. So, Hookie-chan can fly Ichiku in there. Shifuyu nodded and looked at Hauk. Can you do it? Yes, ma'am, she said with a smile. Ichika and I will be able to complete this mission. Naruto watched as this went on, but couldn't shake the feeling as if something bad was going to happen. Is the area secure? He asked and Shifuyu looked at him. She saw the worry on his face. We have cleared the area within a 10-mile radius, Shifuyu said, but this didn't seem to satisfy his worry. Can't we send a backup team? He asked. If they fail, we have to plan another attack. Wouldn't having backup be handy? That is correct, Shifuyu stated, but we don't have any other units that can go that fast. Naruto was about to mention the meteor when he was cut off by Hookie. Ichika and I can take care of it, she said with confidence. Naruto looked at her and shook his head. Fine, he said 
getting up. Everyone watched as he left and wondered what was going on in his mind. Shifuyu watched him go and turned towards Achika and Hookie. The mission will commence in two hours, dismissed. Everyone left the room. Shifuyu turned and looked at Maya who had a look of worry on her face. Maya wanted to ask if she could talk to Naruto but remained silent. I will be stepping out for a moment, Shifuyu said to Maya. Monitor the situation and immediately report any changes. Maya nodded and watched as Shifuyu leave the room. Shifuyu sighed and looked around. She saw Naruto standing outside in the courtyard, staring at the sky. This is going to end badly, Naruto sighed as she approached. Shifuyu looked at him. What makes you say that? She asked him. Naruto stared off into space. Just a feeling, he said. I feel as if my heart is being squeezed and my legs are shaking. I can't really put it into words. Shifuyu gave him a reassuring look. Everything will be fine, she said and he nodded. He gave her a small smile. I hope you're right, he said sadly and walked away. A few hours later, Ichika and Hooky were flying towards the rogue IS. Ichika hung on to Hooky for dear life as they neared the target. They both knew that they had one shot at this and if they failed, something bad was going to happen. Soon they saw the enemy come into view. Hookie looked back at Ichika and gave him a confident smile. Let's do this, she cried and Ichika nodded. She turned her IS at a sharp angle, coming up directly behind the rogue IS. Ichika readied his Yukihira and was about to strike, when the enemy IS turned and fired upon the pair. They broke off their attack and watched the enemy IS as it began to rain down fire on them. This is not going to end well, Ichika exclaimed, dodging enemy fire. In mission room, Everyone sat at the table, listening and watching the battle as it took place. So far Achika and Hooky were holding their own against the Silver Gospel, but the battle could go either way. Naruto watched and out of the corner of his eye he noticed a shipping vessel sailing below, while the fight continued high above. What the hell is that ship doing there? He shouted, drawing everyone's attention to the ship. Shifuyu looked at Maya and got on the radio. She was silent for a moment, while she listened for a reply, before she continued. Then why is there a ship in the middle of the battlefield? Maya said, drawing her attention. Ichika told Hooky that if she had power, she should protect people causing the girl to freeze. They watched him fall and Hooky catch him before he hit the water. Everyone was silent, all in shock of what had just happened. Naruto quietly got up and left the room. This thing had hurt his friends and he was going to make it pay. Naruto waited, till Ichika and Hooky got back and made sure that Ichika was okay. He slowly disappeared from the group and headed towards his IS lap. That damn thing is going down, Naruto thought, as he reached his destination, only to find his way blocked by Shifuyu and Maya. I expected you here sooner, Shifuyu said looking at the blonde. Move, Naruto said with a hint of anger in his voice. No, Shifuyu replied. Then I will make you move, Naruto said, as he slowly made a fist. Shifuyu gave him a stern look. I'd like to see you try. Naruto need no other invitations and attacked. He charged forward and threw a straight jab towards Shifuyu's stomach. She blocked the attack and countered with a punch of her own. Naruto blocked this, but was pushed back. Damn, she hits hard, Naruto thought, as he watched Shifuyu charge him. She lashed out with a hard kick towards Naruto's left side. He saw this and spun around the kick. He used the momentum of the spin to try and hit her with a left hook, only for her to redirect the attack and throw him off balance. She took advantage of this and, grabbing him by the shoulder, flipped him onto the ground. Naruto tried to get up, but Shifuyu puts a foot on his chest. That enough, she ordered while the blonde looked up at her with anger. You are confined to your quarters. Why? Naruto asked as he got up. So you can't do anything stupid, she said, dragging him to his room. I'm not going to do something stupid. Naruto grumbled as she dragged him along. Shifuyu shook her head. Yes, you were she snapped back. You were going to take your IS and go fight the Silver Gospel on your own, without a plan or backup. I would have figured it out, Naruto said. Shifuyu stopped and gave him a stern look. That would have gotten you hurt or worse, killed, she said, making him flinch. I am responsible for your safety and I can't lose another pilot. Naruto fell silent and soon they arrived at his room. She walked him in and called Maya over. Make sure he doesn't leave, she ordered, and left the room. Naruto sat with his back against the wall, not saying anything. Maya looked at him and could see the anger and sadness in his eyes. She walked over and sat down by him. She put a hand on his shoulder as he turned to face her. I hate this, he finally said, as he looked at the wall. It's not that bad, Maya replied. You're just stuck in this room. Naruto looked at her. 
That's not what I hate, he whispered and looked at her. I hate feeling helpless. I have this power yet there is nothing I can do. Maya looked at him and pulled him into a hug. You're not helpless, she said as she held him. I know it seems as if there is nothing you can do, but it will be okay. Naruto wrapped his arms around Maya and snuggled into her neck. Thank you, he whispered and she smiled. Hours later, they did what? Shifuyu shouted at the top of her lungs as she watched the reports. It seemed that all the girls had left and went to fight the rogue IS. Shifuyu shook her head. She had stopped Naruto from going but the others had left instead. She banged her fist against the console and headed out of the room. She knew that without Naruto's help, they didn't stand a real chance of beating the Silver Gospel. She opened the door to Naruto room only to see Maya straddling the blonde. They both turned at the same time and broke apart quickly, blushes on each of their faces. She shook her head and mentally planned to talk to them later about what was going on. Naruto, I need you to suit up, she ordered. Naruto stared at her in confusion. What happened? He asked with a bit of worry in his voice. Well, while I was dealing with you, the others had the same bright idea and went after the IS, Shifuyu explained. Naruto face darkened. I'm sending you out to help. They can't do this on their own. I will try my best Oramura, Sensei. Naruto responded and rushed out of his room toward his IS lab. He rushed in and looked toward the freedom. Awaken freedom, he commanded and was soon surrounded by light, the freedom covering his body. Hatch open, a line for meteor attachment. He slowly backed into the meteor and watched as the systems linked. He smiled when he saw all systems green and he started the engines. The GN drives hummed to life and soon the compression was at a steady rate and he slowly lifted off. Systems all green, he noted and slowly left his IS lab area. Naruto, Shifuyu said through the radio, do your best and make sure you all come back. We'll do, he replied and looked out to the sea. Let's see what this can do. He shot off and soon a sonic boom was heard. Naruto was surprised by this, noting that he wasn't even going at full speed and accelerated faster. Soon, he was past Mach 3. I'm on my way. With the girls. Cecilia watched as the Silver Gospel fended off her friends. They had been attacking it for a while and still hadn't been able to beat it. She watched as Laura stood on a nearby cliff and fired her particle cannon, hoping to hit the enemy but she missed. Hookie charged in to try and hit it with her swords but couldn't get close enough, while it rained down defensive fire. Rin and Charlotte fired from different angles but still they were unable to land a decent hit. Cecilia looked at it with anger and released her bits. They flew towards the rogue IS and fired at all angles. The enemy IS dodged all the blasts and turned its attention towards Cecilia. Cecilia, seeing this, called back her bits and barely dodged to the side as the enemy attack sailed past her. She aimed her laser rifle and fired, only for the IS to dodge and charge her. She dodged to the side and kicked the IS away. Laura, seeing this, fired a shot at the IS, getting a direct hit. Rin and Charlotte fired at the IS and scored hit after hit. Cecilia turned and fired all of her weapons at it, and soon an explosion was heard. The silver gospel fell out of the sky and plummeted toward the earth. We did it, Rin shouted. Suddenly a shockwave of power was felt, and everyone turned to see the silver gospel had stopped its decent and angel wings had appeared on it back. Say, second shift, Charlotte said as they watched as the enemy IS suddenly disappear from view. Everyone looked around, tense. Where is it? Rin said, only for it to appear next to her and knock her out of the sky. Rin, Charlotte called, but couldn't do anything as the IS appeared and attacked her. She was able to dodge the attack and fire her shotgun at the IS. The enemy dodged the attack and rained laser grenades at Charlotte. She dodged to the best of her abilities, but was soon hit and sent flying. Laura fired her cannon, hoping to hit the IS but her attacks were dodged each time. She followed it to the best of her abilities, but was soon hit by a rain of laser grenades. Cecilia and Hooky watched as their friends fell, leaving them to face the enemy. This thing is a monster, Cecilia thought, and leveled her blaster rifle and began to fire. The silver gospel dodged the blast with ease, but Cecilia wasn't done yet. She released her bits and had them add to her rain of fire. The silver gospel dodged the attacks and countered with its laser grenades. Cecilia knew she couldn't dodge, and watched the grenades fly toward her. Suddenly Hooky was in front of her, deflecting grenade after grenade. Keep firing, she ordered to Cecilia. I'll protect you. Thanks Hooky, she said and continued her attack. She was able to graze the silver gospel, but that didn't seem to phase it at all. It looked at the pair, 
and then began to fire a barrage of laser grenades. Hookie stood ready and started to deflect them. When another wave was sent, Hookie tried her best to deflect the attacks, but there were too many, and she too, soon fell. Cecilia had flown out of the line of fire and saw that she was the last one standing. She started to fire her rifle at the Silver Gospel, but her attacks were dodged. She dodged to the side as the Silver Gospel fired at laser grenades. She turned and saw the enemy right in front of her. She was hit in the leg and then the stomach. Cecilia flew back and floated for a bit. Her shield had dropped to below a hundred, and she knew she couldn't take another hit like that. Unfortunately, her bits had been destroyed, and her rifle was nearly out of power. She watched as a barrage of laser grenades rained down toward her. I'm sorry, she whispered to her friends and waited for the attacks to hit her, when suddenly a large beam took out the grenades. She turned and saw Naruto flying towards her. He was hooked up to some kind of weapons pack and traveling very fast. He stopped in front of her and looked her over. Are you okay? Cecilia looked at the blonde, happy to see him. I'm fine, she said. But everyone else? Naruto nodded. Take care of them, he said and then turned towards the silver gospel. I'll deal with this. But, Cecilia began. But Naruto held up his hand. I can take care of this, he said with a serious look. Those who hurt my precious people will be destroyed by my hands. Cecilia looked at the blonde and nodded. You'd better, she stated as she tried to hide the tears starting to flow. I always keep my promises, he said, and turned to face the silver gospel. Now it's my turn, you piece of crap. He lifted one of his large cannons and fired. The rogue IS dodged to the side and then sent a barrage of laser grenades at him. Naruto smiled and fired his cannons. The two attacks canceled each other out, but Naruto had already charged. He turned the cannon into a large beam sword and brought it down onto the silver gospel. It dodged to the side and charged the blonde, only to be met by a face full of missiles. Naruto watched as it backed off and flew back a safe distance. He locked all of his weapons on it and fired. The silver gospel dodged and counterattacked with its laser grenades. Naruto spun away from the barrage and fired his cannons, hitting the silver gospel in the back. Yes, Naruto exclaimed and charged forward. Activating his large beam sword, he brought the blade down on the rogue IS. Suddenly, the enemy rolled away from the attack and sends laser grenades at him, at near point-blank range. The attack hit Naruto and pushed him back. His shields dropped from 600 to 490, and the meteor received some damage. Damn, he said as he went through a systems check. Meteor armor damaged, but still usable. Lost missile launchers 2 and 4. Engines still operational. He watched as the silver gospel flew high into the air and began to rain laser grenades on him. Naruto pushed the GN drives to maximum and shot away from the attacks. He watched as the Silver Gospel tried to follow him, but he was moving too fast. He activated his beam sabers and charged. The Silver Gospel couldn't dodge his first attack and soon Naruto was using his speed to land multiple hits on the Silver Gospel. While this was going on, Cecilia had gotten everyone together, and they watched as Naruto attacked the Silver Gospel over and over. They were surprised by his speed and quickness, but were happy he was able to fight it. He can win, Cecilia thought as she watched Naruto land another hit. Naruto turned and flew towards the silver gospel at full speed. Die, he shouted. When a red alert filled his screen, he came to a halt as his systems began to flash red. What's going on? He thought and saw that the meteor was unable to cope with power the GN drives produced, and it had shut down all systems in both the meteor and freedom. He turned and watched as the silver gospel looked at him. He quickly tried to restart his systems, but to no avail. The silver gospel began to spin and soon laser grenades filled the sky. He was hit and an explosion was heard. Everyone watched in horror as he fell out of the sky parts flying everywhere. Cecilia watched in horror. Naruto! She shouted as tears streamed down her face. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content, click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.